Yes. Which, you know, you don't have to work hard there to find people dissing on vaccines until recently. Some of their, you know, some of their people some now of them, some of them. have started suggesting, hey, science works. Vaccines work. Why? Here's the reason why. Look at this. So this is age 18. It's adults with at least one COVID vaccine dose by their main source of news. Look at this. Fox News, just 62 percent of people who use Fox News as their main news source have, it, have at least one dose. Compare that to ABC News, ABC, CBS, NBC, 79 percent or this network and MSNBC, 83 percent. So what we see is about 20 points less of the Fox News audience has been vaccinated compared to the people who get their news from, say, some other television outlet. And the trend lines here are also revealing, yes? Very revealing. And this sort of gets at something that's so interesting to me is if, if you look back to, say, mid-April to mid-June, look here, M CNN, MSNBC, 74% of the audience was vaccinated. ABC, 75%. Fox News, 61%. Now jump ahead to their numbers from late June to late July. Look at this. Fox News just went from 61 to 62. Barely a move at all over the last month and a half compared to, say, the ABC, CBS, NBC crowd, a four-point jump from 75 to 79. And the CNN, MSNBC crowd, look at that, a jump from 74% to 83%. So what we're seeing is it's not only that Fox News is lagging, but it's also that the trend line's in a poor direction where they really, the audience that was vaccinated continues to be vaccinated, obviously, but not a lot of new people getting vaccinated, even though we're seeing that from people who get their news from, say, another network. Okay, so I'm going to guess that the 61%, that is now 62%, of Fox News viewers who got vaccinated were over the age of 65. I'm just going to guess that that is the fact about them uh, this is pure poison. You understand that. This is absolute poison. This is a red state surge that we did not and do not have to experience into the fall when it's going to be uh, flu season. Naturally, it's going to be viral season. I mean, this is this is crazy. This is so we were doing about uh, anywhere from two to three million vaccinations a day during the initial uh, uh, uh surge of vaccinations when people said okay this was a really sucky year this really blew i want to go places i want to do things i'm a senior i'm vulnerable whatever it was that you told yourself that made you take care of yourself and the others around you um now we're down to in 10 days in the last 10 days combined we did 5 million vaccines we were doing 3 million vaccines each day, every day. And now in the last 10 days, we've managed to find 5 million people who are ready to help themselves. This is really bad. This is dangerous. This is, uh, you know, and, and the doctors, I'm telling you, doctors, nurses, especially in Tennessee, in uh, St. Louis, in Louisiana, in Alabama and of course in Mississippi, they are getting very, very cynical about treating you. They will treat you, but they are getting very cynical about it, saying, my God, what is wrong with these people? And they're asking good questions. Like one of the questions I heard a doctor ask over the weekend, he said, why don't people trust us when we tell them that the vaccines are safe and effective? but they do trust us to take care of them when they're sick. What is it that only when you have everything to lose, suddenly you say, oh, I'll, I trust my doctor, but prior to that, you did not? You thought your doctor was some sort of involved in some sort of communist plot or, or, or some sort of anti-freedom connected group? I mean, this is bizarre, this is crazy, this makes no sense to me at all. And it's always anger. It's always anger. The people that don't want to get, they're angry. They're angry. You're shoving it down my throat. You're this, you're that. Nobody is shoving anything down any orifice of yours. It is completely not mandatory. It is completely by choice. What is going on, though, is our hospitals are getting overwhelmed again with people who refuse to take care of themselves. And then when they're very, very sick, they report to the hospital and say, fix me. Now you fix me. And you know what the problem with that is? 
it's not just the exhaustion and the burnout from the nurses and the doctors and the clinicians and the respiratory therapists and the rooms that you're taking up and the amount of time that it requires to prone you and intubate you and then get you rehabbed because you've been laying on an intubator for days and your muscles are getting weak and whatever and maybe now you have long COVID and you need constant care and you're chronic or whatever. No, it's because people who need surgery, people who need hip replacements, people who don't have COVID, they can't get any medical care themselves because you're gumming up the whole freaking hospital. Inside the hospitals, I have to say, you know, the nurses, the doctors, they're burnt out. It's been a year of continuous work with COVID-19 patients throughout the pandemic. The burnout is, is, is from constant exposure to death and trauma and they are exhausted and you have no respect for their long education, for their informational value, unless you're very, very sick and then you, oh, please give me the vaccine. And they have to then tell you it's too late. It's too freaking late. So you have hospitalizations in Tennessee. Now you remember Tennessee, they fired the woman who was in charge of vaccinations in Tennessee, Dr. Um, I think her name was Fiscus, remember? They fired her. They had this Tennessee town hall meeting, right? This, uh, you know, and uh, they fired her because they said she was uh, tempting children with these vaccines or so. It was such crap. It was so brutal that, you know, she, she said, well, you know, they told her she could resign or be fired. She said, go ahead and fire me. They fired her. And now Tennessee cases have doubled. They've doubled. Hospitalizations have doubled. And 80% of the new cases are tied to Delta. The transmission rate is increasing. 95% of everybody in the hospital, everybody on the oxygen tag, everybody in the prone position, 95% of those people are unvaccinated. And they are tired. And their patients are getting younger. They said during the peak of the COVID pandemic, when their hospitals were packed, most patients were over 61. Now they say their patients are averaging 51 years old and they have been treating an, an increasing number of younger patients. This one nurse, his name is Matt, I'll just leave it at that, because people are abusing caregivers. How sick are you? Caregivers online, they abused this, uh, this doctor that was fired, uh, Michelle Fiscus, that was her name. She said that she endured a right-wing backlash, making her a major target online, offline, because she had asked the general counsel of the state of Tennessee whether or not the mature minor doctrine applied to kids who were between 12 and 18, but you know wanted a vaccine without their parents being present. Remember that? Okay, so now they're treating people in their mid-20s. And this uh, nurse, Matt, said, that when he used to treat patients, he thought, oh my, that, that could have been my grandparent. That could have been my parent. He said, now I look at these patients and he said, that could be me. He's 29 years old. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.